Gotta love that amazing grace. Amen? Hey, if it wasn't for that, man, that, that's what it is. It's really, this, this whole thing is all about his grace. He's given us what we didn't deserve and took what he didn't deserve so that we wouldn't have to have what we do deserve. Amen? How cool is that, man? Because I'm going to tell you, I know what I deserve, and it sure isn't anything I'm getting right now, man. You know, I, every, I'm living in grace. I'm living in that amazing grace. I'm living in that moment, that, that season of, of change in my life. And, and it's good. You know, we're moving forward. God's doing great things with the church. I mean, it's awesome because, you know, we started the Saturday night service. And it's a new season for us. And it's given us a new change of a new service. But it's also gave us room here. It gives you a new avenue. If you invite someone to church and they say, oh, sorry, can't make it. Got to work every Sunday. No problem. We got a Saturday night service. And um, it really is where it's an incredible thing that that grace that he just pours out on us, how he changes our lives. Today I'm preaching a message, and, and I don't do this very often, but every once in a while when I feel the Lord's leading, I re-preach a message, okay? And and I'm preaching a message to, to this this morning that I, I obviously preached last night because I, I bring the same message Saturday and Sunday. But a message that I, I preached for a first time in in. October of 2009 and it was when we were at JJ's we had just gotten into JJ's and I didn't really realize what the date was until this morning when I was rebrushing my notes and I looked back at because I knew I told the folks last night but it was one of those things where I'd studied something else all week long. It was one of those things where I was I was yesterday afternoon putting the final touches on the recipe for that message and I just couldn't get a piece from God on it. I just couldn't connect on it. It just didn't feel right. You ever had anything that just didn't feel right? You go ahead and do it and it just flops like a brick. Do you know what I'm saying? Or you ever had something that doesn't feel right so you didn't do it and then what you did just worked out just wonderful. It's like you had the Midas touch. That was last night in this place. It was like God's spirit was just all over this place. And I don't re-preach messages very often because I like to bring something fresh. I'm not, I'm not a rerun. Now I will say this. I did rewrite it so I'm not preaching from the same notes. I rewrote it to get it fresh in my heart. But the title of today's message is Enjoy the Season. And I thought it was really remarkable that the first time I preached it was October 4th. And then when I re-preached it yesterday was October 5th. How God brought it back around just at the same exact time of season for me to bring back to our congregation. Little story here I want to read to you that, that someone had sent me one time. And it was back when I first got the, the, this message was coming to me. It was, the, here it is. And, when I think of seasons, I think of farmers because I was raised back in the Midwest and cornfields, even all around Chicago, there was cornfields and, and, and down in Missouri, there was a lot of hay fields and soybeans and, and, and silo and all kinds of different things that, that, that grow and they all grow in seasons and seasons are important. And today the title of my message is enjoy the season. So here's a little story. I usually don't read stories, but I'm going to read this one because I don't think I can tell it as good as I can read it. It says one day a farmer's donkey fell down into a well and the animal cried pity, pitifully for hours as the farmer tried to figure out what to do. Finally, he, the farmer, decided the animal was old and that, well, he just needed to cover in the well anyways. So he just didn't think that the, that the donkey was worth retrieving. He invited his neighbors over to come and to help him. And they grabbed shovels and began to shovel dirt into the small well. At first, the donkey realized what was happening and he cried horribly and made all kinds of donkey sounds. You know what those sound like, right? I don't have to do it? Okay, thank you. I'm glad because I'm not real good at that. How many know we've all made that sound in our life at one place or another? You made it out and realized you sounded like a donkey, but you made that sound. Right? All right. We'll, we'll move on with the story. That's, that's why I said it's always better if I stick with the script, right? I very seldom do that. <laughs> so the donkey cried, made a horrible sound. Then, then to everybody's amazement, he quieted down. A few shovel loads later, the far, farmer finally looked down. And well, he was astonished at what he saw. With each shovel full of dirt that was shoveled down onto the donkey's back, the donkey was doing something amazing. He would shake it off and take a step up. As the farmer and his neighbors continued to shovel dirt down into the well, the animal would shake it off and take a step up. Pretty soon everyone was amazed as the donkey stepped out of the well over the edge and trotted off happily. Life is going to shovel dirt on all kinds. Life is going to shovel all kinds of dirt on all of us. The trick is 
getting out of the well is to shake it off and step up each one of us have troubles in our lives we should use as stepping stones we can get out of the deepest wells just by not stopping never give up shake it off and step up shake it off and step up title of today's message is enjoy the season and and um we all go through seasons in life how many understand what i'm saying my wife just went through a, a season that she worked for victoria's secrets and she was talk we were talking this morning as we went on a walk in the wilderness by our house and um talking about how when she was in that season she didn't like it because she had to miss some Sundays I didn't like it because she wasn't here on Sundays with us and she's always run my altar call music at the end and she really is gifted at it it's not just happenstance she's very gifted at it and um, we missed her I missed her she missed her old job although she needed to be away from it for a season I mean know what I'm saying she learned some things at Victoria's Secrets that she wouldn't have learned where she was at she learned how to be a better employee. She learned how to be a better leader. And she learned how to be better at what she was going to go back eventually do at Harley Davidson. Okay? The people that, that she was working for at Harley Davidson learned in that season that she was a much better employee than they even gave her credit for, even though they, she thought she was a good employee. She learned some things in that season. During that season, though, she wasn't happy with her job. But you know what she did? During that season that she wasn't happy with her job, she still did the best at her job and everything else in life that she could, even though she didn't care for that job. We have to learn to enjoy the season we're in. Amen? And some seasons are worse than others. Now, that's a pretty lighthearted season, to be honest. I mean, in the time, she didn't think it was so lighthearted because there were some Sunday mornings when I was getting on my motorcycle and rolling off to church, and she was getting in the car, rolling to Victoria's Secrets, with a tear in her eye because she wanted to be a big house ink. But seasons aren't always easy and I do understand that. So, so I preface this whole message with this because I'm telling you to enjoy the season. And we're going to understand that uh, there, there, seasons can be harder than that. that that's one. Ex Here's another example of, of season. There's a wonderful couple in this life that I've been uh, in this church that I've been very close with even before we launched the church. I did their wedding on uh, the year 2006 before we launched this church. We launched this church July 2007. It's Natalie and Luke, and, and you probably don't notice them very often because they always sit in the back. Luke videos. Luke's the guy that gets all the videos online for me, so that and he make he Luke makes me look good. Amen. Because I couldn't do that for myself. Number one, I can't video myself and preach at the same time. You get tired of that. Y'all say you like the little life and the fast thing, but if I did it while I was preaching, you wouldn't like it. Okay. But Natalie and Luke are very close friends of mine. Very close friends of mine. And um, they went through a season that you read in the Bible often, where they, they were married, but weren't able to have children. And they tried, and they tried, and they did everything they could. And this may sound like, like a little, but this, this is a very hard season for them to go through. Think other things in their life were going well. But let me tell you, no matter how well everything else in your life is, we're all wired in some way or another to be able to procreate and, and see our future, a legacy left behind us. And I've known them, like I said, longer. I, I did their wedding the year before. So we just celebrated our six year anniversary here at Big House Inc., right? They're getting ready to celebrate seven years. No baby, no baby. Every December 9th comes by. I'm sure that that will be on, on their heart. And I, and I know especially, I mean, us guys, we don't, we handle it different, but I know Natalie very, because I knew Natalie actually before I knew her husband, Luke. And she so wanted to be a mama and couldn't be a mama. And that season was very hard. It was hard for me as a pastor to watch her go through it. It was hard for me as a pastor to sit with her and, and, and when, when the subject would come up to see the tears come down her eyes. How many of those seasons aren't always fun? Well, we go through seasons. Seasons can be tough. And so they decided, okay, if we can't have our own baby, we still want to be able to raise kids somehow, some way, some shape, some form. So they applied for adoption. And so now this year when they come around on their anniversary, they've been qualified for a baby. The baby is due in December. And they're in a brand new season. There's a whole new thing going on in their life. Seasons change. You can't control them and I can't control them. Do you understand that? 
It says it in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. It says, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter that is under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest. If you read it in Ecclesiastes, it actually goes on to talk about a time for a little bit of everything. He goes on to say, it's a time to kill and a time to heal. That there's a time to tear down and there's a time to build up. That there's a time to laugh and there's a time to cry. There's a time to dance and there's a time to grieve. That there's a time to scatter stones and there's a time to gather, gather stones. There's a time to embrace folks and there's time to turn away. There's a time to search and there's a time to quit searching. There's a time to keep and there's a time to give away. There's a time to tear and there's a time to mend. There's time to be quiet and there's time to speak. There's time to love. There's time to hate. There's time for war and there's time for peace. What's he saying? He's saying God really has it all under control get me. You can't change the season you're in. You can't make the clock tick any faster, any slower. Every one of us are given 24 hours and we're all in our own individual seasons. Do you get what I'm saying? That's exactly what he's saying. If you read it in Psalms, Psalms 104, 19 says you, and, he, and this is David play, play, playing, playing his heart probably out there on a, a beautiful starlit night and the moon's up there and David's out there playing his harp and as he prayed, he would sing his prayers to the Lord. That's why they call him Psalms. They were songs that he was singing and expressing his heart and his love for God. And David said, you God, you made the moon and you marked the seasons and the sun knows when to set. He knows that. It's him. He knows it. He's got it under control. He set the moon up there to mark the seasons. You can't change it and I can't change it. Whether you like the season you're in and you'd like to extend it, or whether you can't stand the season you're in and you despise it and you'd like to close the chapter on that book, you and I do not control the seasons. Job said, Job chapter 38, verse 31 and 2 said, you, and he's speaking to God, you, God, can, 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 can direct the movement of the stars. You can bind the clusters of the Pleiades and you can loosen the cords of Orion. And then he spoke to his friends. He said, can you? direct the sequence of the seasons? And my answer is absolutely not. We cannot stop the seasons or start the seasons. I don't know about anybody else in this place, but I rode in on my motorcycle this morning and I do tell you this, I can tell when the season changes. You know why? Because there's a lot more motorcycles parked out here in this back parking lot. How many know what I'm saying? We, those of us that ride, we can't change the season. When it's 114, you know what it is? It's 114. Ain't nothing you can do about it. You can ride and be hot or you can put your bike in the garage and wait till it cools down. But you cannot change the season. Amen? There is nothing we can do about it. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, 14 says, God said, let the lights appear in the sky and let them separate the day from the night. Let the signs mark the seasons and the year. And every season you go through is marked with characteristics. Every season we have in our life is a little bit different than the other season. We recognize the seasons, especially back in the Midwest, but we know that now that it's flipped, it's a little cooler. And, 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 and me and my wife left some friends' house the other night. We rode our motorcycles over. We had dinner. And when we left, she had to have a long sleeve shirt because it was 84 degrees and she was a little bit cool riding home. Yeah, I know that don't sound quite right, does it? But it does in Phoenix mean the season's changing, okay? Hey, listen, you think 84 degrees, that's not much. But from 120, that's a 40 degree temperature swing almost, right? So it's changing. Now, if we were starting at 80 in a 40 degree temperature swing, we'd be down to 40 degrees, you'd be throwing leather on, right? And we wouldn't be snickering so much. But there's a change of season that's happening. You can't control it and I can't control it. When you look at the winter, Winter's usually cold and marked with a cold and indifferent spirit. Matter of fact, people sometimes get indifferent. They don't care as much for people. People can roll by when it's cold. People become cold and indifferent in the winter. Spring, what's spring? To me, because I come from a farming community, spring is marked with dirt and seeds. If you're a productive farmer, and listen, for the kingdom of God, every one of us in here today ought to have the desire to be productive for God's kingdom. Amen? And if you're going to be productive for God's kingdom, you've got to have dirt and seeds. And that's, what, that's exactly what the springtime is about. Summer is characterized by what? 
He said that, that, that you can tell by looking at the characteristics. Everything's marked with characteristics. Summer, especially in Phoenix, characterized by heat. But heat, and as a farmer, also attacks. You got a lot of birds, you got, a lot, got all kinds of stuff. And then you look at fall. Sometimes even when you say fall, the next word that wants to come out of your, heart, your, your, your mouth is festival. Fall harvest festival. Fall is known for harvest. And folks, we all have seasons. You can't control them and I can't control them. I wish I could control them, but I cannot control them. There's times when I go, oh, it's so good right now. Can we extend this, God? It's like, I wish I could have just extended last night to this morning because it was so phenomenal in this place. So I just had to pray instead. God, do something new and exciting and special this morning for the people who are here. You can't extend a day. You can't extend a season. You can't extend a moment. They pass by. You're not in control, and I'm not in control. And get this. Wintertime is not only reserved for those who are bad. Because it's cold and indifferent. You can't really get anything to plant. You can't get anything to grow. Wintertime's a tough time. It's characterized by cold and indifferent thoughts. Cold and indifferent people. But winter doesn't have to be cold and indifferent if you recognize the season. And if you're in a winter time in your life right now, and maybe you found yourself cold and indifferent towards people, cold and indifferent towards your family, cold and indifferent towards the things of God, if you wake up and recognize that that cold and indifference doesn't have, you, you don't have to take it as negative. When it's cold like that, what does a farmer do? Farmer doesn't just sit and soak when it's cold. Gets his plows ready. He changes the oil on his tractors. He gets things ready so that when the springtime comes, he'll be ready. He sharpens the, the, he sharpens the mowers. He gets, it, he gets his tools ready. And listen, if you seem to be in a cold and indifferent place, because in the wintertime, it don't matter how many seeds you want to drop on the ground, ain't nothing growing. How many get what I'm saying? It ain't going to grow. Matter of fact, you go to start plowing, digging up with your shovel, you're going to break the handle. You're going to be anti-productive. Because it's winter time. You ought to be kicking back. And sharpening the plow. And getting it ready for the right season to dig with. You ought to be making sure that you've got all your, 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 your seeds in line. Now, I'm not talking about the, these seeds right here. The seed of the Word of God. That's where I'm going, okay? Thank you very much. Got to watch with this big house crew. I've seen everybody's eyes go, what's he talking about now? <laughs> watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 6. The Apostle Paul speaking to the folks at Corinth. He says, perhaps I will stay a while with you. Possibly all winter. And then, you know what he knew? He knew if he went out preaching at winter, he was going to get shipwrecked in different places. He was going to get stranded because of the cold. He was going to go out and try to do what he was supposed to be doing. But you know what was going to happen? He was not going to be productive because it was the wrong season. So he recognized, I'm just going to hang back here with you guys. I'm going to chill out for the winter. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to pray. I'm going to dig into God's word. I'm going to build some solid relationships. I'm going to invest in you guys here at Corinth. And then I'll go preach. At winter time, when you seem to not be able to make anything happen, maybe you ought to hang back a little bit. Build some relationships. You know what? I came from a community where we're in a farming community and we had wood stoves. Okay? Winter time, a lot of folks hung out around the wood stove. Because it was the warmest place in the house. There wasn't heat all around the house. The house was heated by one stove without air ducts. So everybody hung out in that same room, but you know what it did? It drew the family closer. And there was relationships around. There were relationships that were rekindled, relationships that were strengthened. There was forgiveness and healing that would help it. Things like that can happen when you don't, when you think you're not being productive, you're in this place of coldness and nothing's growing for you. But all of a sudden, if you embrace the season and enjoy the season, you find I'm building relationships that weren't strong before. I'm sharpening up my tools. I'm digging into God's word because I can't figure out what else to do. I'm digging into God's word. I'm spending time in prayer that I wasn't praying before. For. And you're sharpening your tools. You're getting yourself ready for a more productive season or a more outwardly productive. Let me say it that way. More outwardly productive season. But if you don't handle your winter right, spring's not going to be so good. How many understand what I'm saying? 
If you didn't get your plows ready, if you didn't get your oil changed, you're going to break down the field with your tractor or your combine. It's not going to be good. You take care of that stuff. You do the maintenance. You know what else winter does? Winter replenishes the soil. Maybe you just need to be replenished and didn't know it. So God's putting the brakes on life for you. It happens, folks. That's his cycle. So winter. What else? Spring. What's spring? Spring is dirt and seeds in my book, man. It's dirt and seeds, dirt and seeds. Or it should be dirt and seeds. Now, look, watch this. First, Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. The point is this. I love, I love the Apostle Paul. The point is this, he says. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Listen, dirt and seeds, dirt and seeds, dirt and seeds. It's talking about do you want a bountiful harvest or do you want a little sparing harvest? If you plant a lot of seeds, you get some harvest. If you plant a little seeds, you get a little harvest. But springtime is a time that those seeds go in. And if you're a planter, if you're a farmer who plants, you're plowing and you're planting, you're plowing and you're planting, you're plowing and you plant. And sometimes you can get tired of dirt and seeds. Number one, seeds are just dusty anyways. How many understand what I'm saying? Bags and, and, and bundles of seeds and combines. Seeds are dusty, dirty. It's dirty business. Plowing dirt is just dirty business too. You see the plow going down through the field and you see the cloud of dust off to the side. It's dirty. But you know what else you see in the springtime? And you got to watch yourself on this because you could be in your field doing what you're supposed to do. Dirt and seeds, dirt and seeds, dirt and seeds. And you look over at the people. Ah, oh, look at their field. And they have beautiful wild spring flowers. And there's yellows and purples and blues. and Right? That stuff grows back there where they're planting it. That stuff grows too. And it grows naturally. And it's green, lush grass underneath. It's just beautiful. You're like, oh, I'm dirt and seeds, dirt and seeds. And oh, it's beautiful. Oh, dirt and seeds, dirt. And it even looks cooler over there. And it, it's not as uncomfortable because it's dirt and seeds. And the dirt's in your nostrils and in your mouth. And all your eyes are plugged up. And you wipe, wake up in the morning. And you're, you're, you're not just, it's not just the, the normal you know, stuff you wipe out of your eyes. But now it's like gritty and it's dirty. How many know what I'm talking about? Am I on the right planet this morning? Now, you can be over there where it looks beautiful. But listen, my son would not choose that one either because he is so allergic to all them flowers over there. But truth of the matter is, that's about the way it is. Those wildflowers, you know what they're going to produce come fall? Nothing. Bunch more weeds. Bunch more weeds. And if you're enjoying your wildflowers, you know what you're going to get in harvest season? No, but a bunch of weeds that catch fire and burn up fields. Nothing because you enjoyed it in the springtime when you should have been working. And when you have a season that you ought to be busting your butt, you know what you ought to be doing? Busting your butt, exactly. And you know what, I, I believe when God says he works six days and he rested on the seventh, I believe God works six days. Hey, a farmer, let me tell you this, man. A farmer don't wait for the sun to come up. So a farmer beats the sun, gets out there, gets ready so that as soon as the fields are, are, there's enough light out there in the field, they can be working. I remember when I was a teenager hauling hay in fields with some rigged up contraptions trying to shine lights out in the field so that we could see how to stack the hay on the trucks and the trailers. Because you, when, it's, when it's the right season, you got to get busy. And when you're in that dirt and seed season, you know what you ought to be doing? You ought to be digging up the dirt and planting seeds, digging up the dirt and planting seeds, digging up the dirt and planting seeds. So number one, there's a winter season. It's cold and indifferent, but it's beneficial to you if you let it. Number two, there's spring. Spring looks good to everybody else, but to you it might be nothing but dirt and seeds. You don't see nothing happening, but let me tell you, stay productive. Stay busy about the Father's business that you're supposed to be doing. Because it, it, down the road, down the, don't be looking at today. We don't, don't live your life for today. If you live your life for today, everything gets wasted and spent up on today. And springtime, you got to keep your eyes forward to knowing at some time there's going to be a harvest. You got to keep your eyes forward thinking. And then summertime, what's summertime all about? Let me tell you this. Watch this scripture. First Peter chapter five, verse eight and nine says, stay alert. 
Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, consuming who he may devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Folks, let me tell you, that's summertime. This verse describes what summer, summertime is like this for a farmer. There are droughts in the summertime. That's when the bugs get real bad and there are pestilence in, in the fields in the summertime that can, and, can and wipe, locusts can wipe out a whole crop, a whole field. Summertime, what is it? It's time of heat and attack. The heat is on, and you know what? You might be going through a season right now where it seems like the heat has been on you. You've been under attack, and you can't seem to get out from under it. That happens sometimes. We can't control the season. How many know what I'm saying? But you know what? You can prepare for a season. You can know, hey, listen, there is an enemy out there who's prowling around, waiting to attack. A farmer that's a wise farmer knows what the pests of his society or the pests of his community or the pest of his region are and he knows how to protect his crops from them and summertime let me just say this every one of us in summertime looks good a lot of folks in summertime just doing vacations swimming and doing a wonderful thing but you got to know there's heat and attacks and you better be ready to protect what God has given you that's why Peter says stay alert watch out because the enemy is roaming around seeking whom he may devour. Not everybody can he devour. He cannot devour everybody. Only those whom let him devour them. Only those who believe the lie of the devil get devoured by the devil. So you say, well, pastor, how do I, how do I protect myself from the devil? Well, let me just tell you this. Instead of telling you how to protect yourself, how about if I tell you how I protect myself and my wife and my family and the things that we are in charge over being fruitful with? And one of them is this church. I protect my family with Malachi 3.11. Isn't that funny? I protect my family with God's word. Doesn't that sound good? It's true, too. How cool is that? Watch this. Malachi 3.11. The, the Lord says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that it will not destroy your fruits of your soil, and that the vines of your fields shall not fail and bear no fruit, says the Lord of hosts. He said, I'll protect it. How cool is that? I'm not the protector in the summer. Now, I don't have to spray the pests. He takes care of it for me. He, because, but you got to know, you got you to read a little deeper than that. I'm, I'm telling you the promise. Help me get what I'm saying. Because you got to, this is, this is the promise. And with every promise, there's two sides to every promise. Just like there's two sides to every story. Read the verse before. What's he say in Malachi 10? He says, stop robbing God. He's, they said, how are we robbing God? He said, you're robbing God with your tithe and your offerings. He said, bring what's mine to the storehouse. What's his? The tithe, he says. The first 10%. Bring it to the storehouse and see if I won't pour out a blessing on you that you wouldn't even be able to receive it all. Now, hey, listen. I want to receive the blessing too. Don't get me wrong. I sure want, want, want I'd love for it to be coming down in ways that I couldn't even grasp it all and get... But that, and that's important in our lives. But this protection that he provides for us, that looking over from the Lord that he provides for us is awful important because it gives you time that in summertime, summertime can be a time of vacations. I can step away from my flock because I'm a tithing pastor. I don't just ask you to tithe, I tithe. I tithe to the district and I tithe to the church. Because I know that my church is protected because God's watching out. God will rebuke the devourer for this church. Pastor Jeff don't have to run around rebuking the devil. You know why? God rebukes him for me. How cool is that? He's more powerful than I am anyways. That's like going, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, you're getting ready to get in a fight. You go, oh, one second. I got to stand in for me. And like this big gorilla comes up and says, Whoa. right? He can take care of my business. I can. Amen. So wintertime is cold and indifferent. Springtime is dirt and seeds. Summertime is heat and pestilence. Fall time. Now that's when everybody's waiting on, right? Let me back up for a second. Can I back back to summer for a second? Because you know what? I talked about how God protects our, 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 our flock, how God protects our fields, right? Didn't I? How many of you... Or like me, there's, there's part of my life, I, I blew it majorly. I didn't have God's protection. 
I blew it. And that part of my productive life, I thought could never be regained because of mistakes I made. Anybody with me on that? You feel like you lost it, you missed it. Joel, God promises. Turn back to me and I'll restore the years that the locusts ate. So if you're like me, come on. How cool is that? He said, you, you come to me, I'm going to protect you. You tithe, I'm going to watch you in the future. But if you come to me with a real sincere heart, I'm going to restore the years that the enemy, you, you've been spinning your wheels. You, had, you went through a summertime that you thought, you're like, whoa, man, that was summer and it ate my lunch. God will restore the years of the locusts. How cool is that? How cool is that? Natalie, God's going to restore those years that we sit at the table and have coffee and you, it would be, a, I told Luke, that, I said, this is going to be so cool, dude. I'm going to be all your, your kids. Gonna be all, dude, your kid's so cute. Remember I said that the other day, Luke? I'm looking forward to the, God's going to, re, God restores those years that seem like they dried up and your crops went to drought. God restores those years. It's incredible. And then there's fall. The fall is important. It falls when the harvest comes in. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap a harvest if we do not faint. If you do not give up, you'll reap. Listen, harvest time is coming in every one of our lives. You may be in harvest time. I believe harvest time is coming for this church right now as we move into this fall season. I believe we are tracking right with the seasons right now and we're getting ready to bring in a huge harvest that we're all responsible to keep and to love and help grow in the relationship with Christ. If we don't grow weary and faint, we reap a harvest. Jesus said to his disciples, John chapter 4, 35 and 36, he said, but I say to you, wake up and look around you. The fields are already white to harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages and they're eternal. The fruit that they harvest is people brought into eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester. Folks, I think he's talking to you. I think he's talking to you, Big House Inc. And I think he was saying, I don't care what season you're in. I don't care if you think you're in spring right now, look around you. Just look. I don't care if you thought you were in summer, you're going through heat and attack and drought, and you couldn't, look around you. Just take, take a pause. Whoa, stop, look around you. The fields are harvest, the, the fields are ripe to harvest right now. And the harvest is people coming to eternal life. We're getting ready to see if we'll be strong, if we'll not grow weary and faint. An incredible harvest in this spring breakout block parties and culminate with our giving out turkeys on Thanksgiving and gifts at Christmas. We have the opportunity. We, we do it every year, so this year should be multiplied if we'll all be strong and get over our season. Hey, listen, and, and I don't say that, and, and I shared that the, those stories because I, I didn't want anybody to think I was um, not compassionate towards your season. I understand we have hard seasons. I understand most of those seasons, if you got the wrong, hey, listen, harvest season can be a tough season too. I remember hauling hay, and the reason we would haul hay all night long and all day long was because it was gonna rain. There was times that I hauled hay practically 24 hours in a row because there was a rainstorm coming, and if you let the rain hit the hay, it ruins the hay. It possibly could burn down the barn because of the heat that is expressed when it tries to dry out in the barn. It's a mess. Sometimes at harvest, you work a lot harder than you want to or you even think is wise. But it's harvest season. And God is saying to us, Big House Inc., look around you. It's harvest. But I know Jesus. He, he took care of his disciples. 
And I bet he would say, I know you. I know it's been hard for you. I know that summertime, that heat almost wiped you out this year. I know when that drought came and you couldn't seem to get a fresh drink of water spiritually, it almost took you down. Or that cold and indifference that you've been through. You thought you were never going to be able to be soft or broken to the Lord again. You thought you would never be able to be compassionate towards another person again. He sees it all. And he says, cast your cares on me.